Good evening and welcome everyone. My name is Bill Wenger and I'm just delighted to be here tonight and honored to serve as the president of the Lancaster Conservancy. I welcome you to our 53rd annual meeting. I wish we were in person, but alas, we're gonna save that for May 24th when we're all inviting you to gather in person at the Ware Center. But tonight we've got some business to do and some stories to tell. I wanna take a moment though and thank our annual sponsors, Clark Associates, Stoufers of Kissel Hill, the Lancaster County Solid Waste and Management Authority, Electron Energy Corporation, Eurofins, Dark Container, Ritu, and Penn Stone. Tonight, we're gonna to go about 45 minutes in length and we'll cover the election of new board members. We'll hear some departmental updates and about our new strategic plan and a recognition of some special friends and partners. To start it off though, I'd like to introduce Sarah Lamachani. She's our board chair. Sarah is a local business leader and a dentist who I've had the joy to work with over the last year. She is passionate about our work. She leads a very dynamic and exciting and interesting board. So she's gonna walk us through the business meeting at this point, which is a requirement in our bylaws that we conduct annually. Welcome, Sarah, what a joy to work with you. Thank you so much, Phil. Welcome everyone to the 2022 annual meeting of the Lancaster Conservancy. We appreciate you joining us virtually this evening and hope to see you at one of our in-person events very soon. As the current board chair, I am thrilled to begin this meeting by sharing some incredible milestones that the Conservancy has reached since we gathered last year. In October of 2021, the Conservancy announced the acquisition of 90 acres of land near Speedwell Forge Lake, which became our 50th nature preserve. With that acquisition, along with several others, including 155 acres bordering the Conewago Creek in Elizabethtown and 130 acres in Lower Chanceford Township in York County, your Conservancy has protected over 8,000 acres of land forever, which is amazing. And just last month, we announced the largest planned acquisition in this organization's history, over 1,000 acres of land in the Susquehanna Riverlands connected to the Helen Hills Nature Preserve. As you know, though, it's not just about protecting the land. We also must care for it too. With restoration projects ongoing, like an expansive tree planting at Safe Harbor Nature Preserve just last week, the Conservancy is hard at work stewarding these precious lands. And these preserves are critical for our community. Just last week, I was able to hike the trail at Kelly's Run. And at the end, I truly found my spirit restored. Later that week, my family and I were able to do the um, wildflower walk at Shanks Ferry with Keith Williams. And it was spectacular. And we all found it an amazing way to connect with each other and also with nature. So I encourage you all to get out there and enjoy the preserves that, that we all care for here. The organization is going strong and we're growing and you'll get to hear more about the ongoing efforts to save nature later this evening. I want to say a special thank you to our dedicated board of directors, our amazing volunteers, our energized staff, and our outstanding professional leadership. But I especially thank you, our donors and our members. Only with your support can we, can, can, we can continue to do this important and urgent work. So at this point, I'd like to call the business portion of the annual meeting to order. You, our members, elect new board members and approve the officers of this organization. This year, we have no other business to do tonight. We do have a robust governance committee. Um, we meet monthly and we met monthly this spring and we vetted multiple candidates. Their recommendation went to the board where both the slate of officers and two new board member nominations received unanimous, unanimous approval to proceed to a final vote by you, our members, this evening. So here are the recommended new member board member nominations elected to serve for a three year term. Our first is Bobby Kinsley. Bobby grew up and continues to live in York County, surrounded by forest, farmland, and county parks. He grew up in the outdoors and loves anything that can be done outside, even in the coldest months. His family has taught him to value philanthropy, community involvement, and conservation. 
He is extremely interested in learning about topics that his formal education did not touch on and seeks to put that knowledge into practice. He regularly enjoys books on conservation, preservation, soil science, habitat restoration, and wildlife management. He and his wife enjoy various outdoor activities together. In this spring, they completed a habitat restoration project neighboring their home and have more projects planned. His current community involvement includes a trustee seat on the York County Parks Foundation Board, which supports the York County Parks with land acquisition and improvement projects. Our next candidate is Silas Chamberlain, PhD. He is a Vice President of Economic and Community Development at the York County Economic Alliance and serves as Executive Director of the Redevelopment Authority of the County of York. He founded and oversees the York County Trail Towns Project and is leading development of the $75 million Cadoras Greenway project. On behalf of the York County Commissioners, Silas leads the Yoko Strong Recovery Task Force, which has advised the county on the allocation of $132 million in federal recovery funds and the Yoko Fiber Broadband Task Force, which is advancing a $72 million investment in countywide broadband. He is currently an adjunct professor of economics and urban revitalization at your college and currently serves as a governor's appointee to the Pennsylvania's Conservation and Natural Resources Advisory Council. Next, I will present here the officers of the board for election. So board chair is myself, Sarah Lamachani, board vice chair, Eric Nordstrom, board treasurer and chair of finance slash audit committee is Jen Lauver. Board Secretary, Alex Snyder. Immediate Past Board Chair, John F. Pfeiffer, Jr. Chair of Land Protection, Chris Ginder. Chair of Community Impact, Julie Jones. And Chair of Stewardship is Jamie Rutland. We have a motion to elect this slate of officers and new members to the Board of Directors. A quick poll will appear on your screen um, please click approve or disapprove, and then we will tally these votes. So you can go ahead and do that now. That should be up on your screen. All right, excellent. Looks like I'm happy to announce that we have overwhelming support to elect these new members and officers. Thank you and congratulations to everyone. At this point, I'd like to turn the meeting over to Kate Gonick, who is our Senior VP of Land Protection and General Counsel, and uh, she's going to help us celebrate our exiting board member, Mike Flanagan. Thank you, Sarah. Oh, wow. Well, I've known Mike for for over 40 years, and I really enjoy his enduring humor and his keen sense of observation, observing what's going on around him and making great suggestions. Mike is a true philanthropist. He gives of both his resources and his time. I have a couple of examples of that. When the Conservancy was unsuccessful in securing much needed access to our Clark Nature Preserve, Mike stepped up and stepped in with pro bono legal services to that were critical to securing the easement necessary to facilitate the great parking and access that we now all enjoy. And when I was unable to attend a tax exemption hearing in York County, Mike stepped in and took on the task of educating the public about why we're in York County and what we're doing there. He does a wonderful job whenever he's in court and outside court. Mike has been on the board for six years, asking great questions and offering critical solutions. He continues to contribute to land protection efforts by staying on the land protection committee, and I am entirely grateful for that. Mike was instrumental in securing funding for both our Welsh Mountain Nature Preserve and also the SAM addition to the Tuckwan Piper Nature Preserve. He has brought expertise to board discussions, and as Mike says, with very few natural lands remaining, and impaired streams throughout, we all need to work on protecting our lands and our landscapes. I cannot thank you enough, Mike, and I'm so happy that you're staying on the Land Protection Committee. Congratulations. I echo your words, Kate. Thank you, Mike. 
I've enjoyed working with you and thanks to all of our strong board. Folks like Mike and Sarah are just the tip of the iceberg. You keep hearing these same themes. 2021 was a remarkable year for the Conservancy. Momentum and growth. We added new staff, we raised more money, we added hundreds of new acres. We broke the 8,000 acre number of protected lands. We expanded our engagement and stewardship departments. We strengthened our record keeping and functioning with new technology. The list goes on and on, but I don't wanna steal the thunder from my team. They can tell you their success stories. So first up, I'd like to introduce you to our finance vice president, Kevin Rolf. He joined us six months ago and he has been a whirlwind of activity since he joined us here this year. And uh, we, he brought a ton of new energy to our accounting, technology and human resource efforts. So Kevin, please share our story with our members. Thanks, Phil, and hi, everyone. My name is Kevin Rolfs, and I joined the Conservancy as the VP of Finance and HR in September of last year. So it's actually been an exciting seven months. Uh, I think I just surpassed the seven-month threshold. Um, as the Conservancy continues to grow and be active in land acquisition, work on key habitat restoration projects, and expand our education programming and community outreach, as I've taken on this leadership role in our finance department, my goal is to continue building out our capacity to grow in a fiscally responsible and sustainable manner while ensuring accurate and informative financial reports are shared with all of our key stakeholder, stakeholders, including everyone listening today. A key part of this capacity growth was having Faith DeJong transition to a hybrid role between our development and finance departments last year. She's been a great addition to our finance team and has really helped me as I've joined the Conservancy. Looking back at 2021, we had a very successful year financially, leading to a strong operating surplus. This growth in donations from supporters like you, combined with increases in grant funding from public and private entities, has allowed us to continue growing our organization. From 2020 to, tw to 2021, we saw a 43% increase in our annual fund and a 19% increase in our proceeds from events. This continued support is from the public is the backbone of our organization and is crucial to each of our programs being able to continue doing the amazing work that you'll hear about later in this presentation. This revenue growth has allowed us has allowed the Conservancy to invest in, in the budget of our three program areas, which are stewardship, community impact, and land protection. For stewardship, this meant adding two new members to the team that are helping us maintain and improve upon our growing nature preserves. In addition, we invested into two new trucks to build out our fleet of vehicles. We also added two new members to our community impact team, allowing us to continue building out our volunteer support as well as our education programming. And then our land protection team led us in acquiring and protecting an additional 655 acres of land in 2021. This was done through a combination of public and private funding that totaled over $8 million. Moving into 2022, we are striving to continue growing in a fiscally responsible and sustainable manner. We'll make further investments in our programs through new staff and on the stewardship and education teams, new equipment and infrastructure like the Bridge of Climbers Run, as well as the single largest tract of land in the history of our organization. We also decided to upgrade our 15 year old accounting system this year, which, which is a major investment in a more robust system called Sage Intact that will help integrate our grant management, timekeeping, donor database, and much more. To achieve these goals, we, were, we will need continued support from our volunteers, donors, and partners who make the work we do possible. Please visit our website for more detailed information via our annual report, audited financial statements, and Form 990 tax returns. The 2021 financial statements and tax returns will be available by late summer this year. I'm also available if you would like, if you would like any further information or have any finance-related questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm now gonna pass things over to Jen Tisan, our VP of Operations and Conservation, who will be walking through some of the key operational improvements we're making within our organization. Thanks, Kevin, and good evening, everyone. When I was hired in January, 2017, the start of our last strategic planning year, we had 12 full-time staff and a few part-time or seasonal staff. Fast forward five years, and by January, 2022, we grew to 19 full-time positions, some of which we just filled this month, and several part-time positions, a few of which are now even year-round. All this growth is a result of our successes over the past five years, but we can't keep growing if our foundation isn't strong. This is the part of the work that doesn't yield pretty pictures and is the first thing to be put on that proverbial back burner 
when capacity is low. But between COVID requiring us all to find new ways to work outside the office and our amazing growth and support from you all, we're at a turning point where this work has become incredibly important, important for our future. Here are just a few of the highlights from the amazing work by the operations team in 2021. First, communications. Our partners, members, and the general public don't only interact with us at events and on our preserves. We need to have a reliable, accessible phone system that's usable for everyone. In late 2020, we implemented a VoIP phone system that lets our team work from home seamlessly. We continued implementation in 2021 and improved the user interface. Our field staff are now accessible via phone when there's reception, and we're working on outfitting them with hotspots to improve connectivity even more when they're deep in the field. Shout out to our administrative staff led by operations manager, Beth Hacker, who really made this dream a reality. Second, data. As a 53-year-old land trust, we've accumulated quite the library of files, and we're not slowing down anytime soon. In 2021, we started the journey to move all our files to the cloud, which also involved reorganizing almost a terabyte of data. Thanks to the hard work of our tech team, as we speak, the last of our files are migrating to the cloud. Now we don't have to stop working when the power or internet in the office go down, which is more often than you might think. Our software runs faster and our field staff can access and upload data and files right from their phone and iPads when they're in the field. And finally, if you've hiked on one of our preserves or participated in any conservancy activity, chances are you've used one of our maps. In 2021, we decided to invest in improvements to our organizational mapping with the goal of a more accurate, effective, sustainable system. At the end of 2021, we hired our first dedicated GIS staff person, Corey Staver, who hit the ground running to streamline our foundational data, making them more accessible to all staff. If you haven't checked out the annual report yet, there are great interactive maps already incorporated. Next up are the maps in kiosks and brochures along with website map improvements. The best is truly yet to come. I couldn't ask for a better team to guide the Conservancy's foundational goals to the finish line. And while all this excellent work was happening in 2021, we were also looking ahead to our next three years. I welcome Phil back to talk about where the strategic planning journey took us. Thank you, Jen and Kevin. This foundational work is so important to our success. And you know, this is our time to be able to share with our members where their investments make improvements in the organization. I'm just so proud of the work energy that you folks bring to this organization. This winter though, our board met in retreat, two separate months to clearly, ar clearly articulate a vision and a new plan for the next three years. We shared that with all of you in the CEO newsletter last month. And tonight we want each of the senior VPs in land protection, stewardship and engagement to share the work that's happening on the ground a number of key questions that were addressed in our strategic plan. We still are focused on land protection as our highest priority, but we're on a journey to become a strong and sustainable professional land trust. And this takes entrepreneurial energy to grow, to exceed expectations and to do amazing work to save our few remaining forests and wild areas before they're lost forever. And to do it with an environmental heart that values and treasures our natural world. This natural world gives us the air that we breathe, the water we drink, and it respects all the creatures, plants and organisms we share this planet with. So this plan we adopted had three key questions. And let me frame them for you now as the senior VPs then will try to answer them. The first question will be addressed by Kate Gonick. She's the senior VP of land protection and general counsel. And that is one I get off asked more than any other. How do we prioritize which areas to protect and restore? Should we grow into a regional organization and spread into adjacent counties? And what about all that work in your county? The second question that the board wrestled with was, how do we balance all of these people that are coming out to our preserves with the goal of habitat protection while meeting the needs of those public who want outdoor recreation? Our senior VP of stewardship, Brandon Tennis, will share about how we balance your desire to use our lands and our need to restore them and not harm them. 
And how do we do that through a larger landscape lens rather than just an individual parcel lens? The third question that the board really wrestled with is how do we involve ourselves and deliver environmental education? How do we get more people excited about nature? You folks on this call are already missionaries. You are part of this effort, but how do we get that circle to grow? So Fritz Schroeder, our senior VP of Community Impact, will talk about our plans to expand programming and to use our nature centers to bring all people into a sense of wonder and understanding of the beauty that we see around us. So first up, Kate, it's been an honor to work and learn from you about our core business, protecting these natural areas forever. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, Phil. Well, our strategic plan asked a few questions, and one of them was, where should we protect land? And so we talked to our, our partners and we came up with a plan. I'd first like to point out that we are a small but mighty land protection team, and we work very closely together on all of the issues associated with finding the land, acquiring the land, funding the land, and everything that goes with that. And Mac, I wanna call out Mac Castile, who's our land protection coordinator and has served in that capacity a full year on May 3rd of this year. So thank you, Mac. What the land protection team does is we follow stewardship's lead with a focus on important landscapes and habitat and recreation. Nature does not follow geopolitical boundaries. Our partners and board have identified regions with the highest value natural lands, and we work within those regions. And they are the Highlands region and the Susquehanna Riverlands Conservation Landscape. The Highlands region is a federally recognized area that runs from Connecticut to Maryland and includes some very high quality natural resources with a focus on water conservation. There is some funding that comes with that, but what's important is that it's already been identified and lots of studies have occurred to let us know just how important the resources are there. The Lancaster Highlands include the forested conservancy preserves like the Welsh Mountain Nature Preserve, Donegal Highlands, Reynolds Kettle Run, and others, and also protects some agricultural, state, and county lands within that section that you can see there that kind of wraps around the eastern and northern tier of Lancaster County. In 2021, with the addition of two new preserves, the Conservancy was able to increase our connectivity to these other protected lands within the region. That's the Speedwell Forge acquisition at 90 acres and Conowago acquisition at 155. The Conowago Creek Preserve at 155 acres completely surrounds the Conowago Creek and also the Conowago, Lancaster County Conowago Trail. This property was slated for development. It's surrounded by um, warehouses and it's fundamental to protecting not only the view shed from that county trail, which is heavily utilized by, I'm guessing everyone on this call and is a wonderful opportunity to get outside, but also the critical water sources of the Conowago Creek that there's lots of work being focused on that area. The Speedwell Forge Preserve, some of you may be familiar with this because it's 90 acres of upland forest directly adjacent to Lancaster County Speedwell Forge Park and Lancaster County Speedwell Forge Lake. Our partners at the County and at the Fish and Boat Commission share, shared knowledge with us on how critical these lands are. We've been working together, having conversations, and a focus on the water resources that are so important here as well as the interior forest habitat. They urged us to take the risk of acquiring this land in a public auction. Public auction is a big step for the Conservancy, but we went and did it, and we now have Feedwell Port Forge uh, acquisition directly adjacent to, again, Lancaster County Feedwell, Speedwell Forge Park. These two new preserves and 245 acres, uh, a total 245 acres for a total of 10 preserves and almost 1,600 acres within the Highlands region in Lancaster County. Our board also identified another region, another landscape that I know you've been hearing about over the years. This is our most potential and most important landscape for land protection. We focus here on forest, on forest connectivity and water resources and protect tributaries as they empty into the Susquehanna. And that is the Susquehanna Riverlands Conservation Landscape. And it's an area identified by our partners at Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. We serve as the external lead, but it's a high priority natural resource area. In the southern part of Lancaster County, but you see, we focused on lands, uh, including the Mill Creek Nature Preserve, which contains two 
tributaries to the Susquehanna and upland interior forest and connects to both Brookfield and Conservancy preserves and protected lands downstream and upstream. We also focused on the Rice Nature Preserve, which is just up creek, up river from the Mill Creek Preserve, and it is 270 acres of incredible upland forest, beautiful tributary to the Susquehanna, and the views shed from Pinnacle and other Lancaster County preserves along the river are protected uh, by the Rice Preserve's acquisition. We also protected some lands, smaller lands, on the Lancaster side, the Peckway addition is 30 one acres within the Peckway Nature Preserve, and it's a habitat focused addition. We wanted to protect this upland forest. We wanted to provide for habitat quarters along the Peckway Creek, and this provided met all those needs. These five projects, resulting in two new preserves, added 410 acres of connector lands within the Susquehanna Riverlands for a total of now 33 preserves and almost 5,500 acres of protected land along the Susquehanna River on both sides in York and Lancaster with both few sheds protected for us all. Majority of the lands that we've been working on in 2021 were, short with, were sold within short time frames by realtors and auctioneers. And only with your continued support can we can protect these critical lands in this real estate market. As you know, in the past, we were able to acquire lands through grants over an extended period of time, but that is no longer the case. So thank you for your support. In the Northern section of the Susquehanna Riverlands, we will be growing exponentially with an incredible new project that will double the lands protected in the Helm Hills region. The Helm Hills region is across from Marietta, from the Northwest River Trail and from East Donegal Township Park. And it includes conservancy preserves along the river, the York side, Wizard Ranch and the Helm Hills Preserve, which protect together over a thousand acres. However, this new acquisition in and of itself is at a thousand additional acres that we will be able to secure and own as of December, 2023. So stay tuned for more updates on this exciting new acquisition. It borders almost four miles of the Cadoras Creek and almost a mile of the Susquehanna River. This incredible project includes upland forests, fields, and water resources. The Conservancy is working to raise the $11 million needed to acquire this land. And as always, additional resources, funds to take care of this land. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity to protect the Cadoras and those fantastic views of the Susquehanna and from the Susquehanna and the Northwest River Trail and Marietta. The Conservancy continues to work on both sides of the river to preserve this incredible landscape and conservation area. These connector lands are so important to protecting important habitat, keeping our streams clean and cleaning the Susquehanna River and meeting the demand for those increased recreational opportunities that we all became acutely aware of over the last few years. We thank you for your continued support for this large landscape effort in both the Highlands and in the Susquehanna Riverlands. Now I have to say just a few words about the next speaker and it's Brandon Tennis. He's our tireless and talented Senior Vice President of Stewardship. He's going to tell you how we balance habitat with recreation and how we care for these precious lands. And we could not do it without Brandon's leadership, his foresight, his planning, and his thoughtfulness. He truly is one of our many gems. Thank you, Brandon. Well, that's very kind of you, Kate. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Good evening, everybody. I am Brandon Tennis, the Senior Vice President of Stewardship for the Conservancy. Um, so we've all thought it, we've likely heard it, and have possibly even said it aloud ourselves, and that is the concerns regarding our stewardship program's ability to assume the full breadth of responsibilities to care for newly established preserves and the growth of existing preserves in pace with the successes of our land protection team in acquiring new and additional lands for preservation and public access. Well, the Conservancy's nature preserves provide many services. Uh, when managed well, existing natural lands provide essential habitat for biodiversity to remain resilient and survive, but restored and improved natural lands increase biodiversity and ensure not just survival, but the ability for our ecosystems to thrive. The woodlands, hedgerows, 
old fields, streams, and rivers that pass by our eyes as we drive to and from across Lancaster and York counties are the last of the few areas remaining to preserve in a natural condition that still, at the, at the very least, exists. And likewise, outside of those remaining natural lands that still exist, there's only a few more areas in which an already disturbed and degraded ecosystem is actually feasible to restore. Therefore, habitat and ecosystem health is our primary directive in stewarding our nature reserves with the objectives of one, sustain at the very least so that we stop any additional loss. Two, maintain that quality as it currently exists so that we can at least sustain its function and not just its structure. And three, improve overall conditions for full health and function, regeneration and resiliency well into the future. But simultaneously, we also provide for public access, which hosts similar considerations as our habitat and ecosystem directives. And the fact that, honestly, there are really so few natural lands available to the general public for recreation anymore. Our rapid growth in population in Lancaster and York County results in greater demands for use of natural lands. And although the Conservancy has proven to be most effective in preserving and providing such spaces, this demand for recreation in turn can and at times has resulted in grave impacts to the habitats and ecosystems of our nature preserves. Similarly then, to our focus on managing habitats and ecosystems, our directive for public access and passive recreation remains the same. One, sustain existing public access. Two, maintain that access with best management practices to reduce any negative impact to the preserved natural surroundings. And three, improve and increase sustainable public access for our preserves, but also across the conservation areas and eco regions in which the individual nature preserves reside. So in combining our directives for managing habitat and ecosystems while balancing our directives for providing sustainable public access, the greatest service that the Conservancy provides is a tangible framework for coexistence between soils, water, geology, topography, insects, plants, animals, and humans alike, and to erase the divide between the differences that we perceive between what is nature and what is natural. When we as humans visit a nature preserve, we are not just doing what comes natural by being outside, we are in fact outside being a part of nature. The Conservancy Stewardship Program is growing. We need to. We have built out a team that in 2016 consisted solely of one full-time employee. We now have eight full-time employees in stewardship. We recently promoted two of our land stewards, Travis Lyle and Sean Roberts, to regional preserves managers who are assigned to oversee and perform the routine and seasonal maintenance within a particular region as defined by the grouping of individual nature preserves into conservation areas. We just recently hired a third regional preserves manager, Evan Peppers, to fill out our three large coverage areas of our preserves as grouped into conservation areas across the three eco regions in which we work. We have aligned our new land steward, Mark Roberts, with specialized training, including wilderness advanced first aid certification, woodland stewardship training for natural working landscapes, and state pesticides and herbicides applicator license. This summer, we plan for Mark to lead a pilot seasonal trail crew to complete the Tuckwin Glen trail system redesign, which includes improving access along the Conestoga Trail between Clark Nature Preserve through Pfeiffer Nature Preserve. We have firmly established the grouping of individual nature preserves into conservation areas as a regional land management strategy that effectively erases otherwise divisionary boundary lines and allows us to manage large landscapes more holistically. This is a significant step in undoing the damage of division and fragmentation. We have also firmly established this through the completion of the first master plan for a conservation area within the Susquehanna Riverlands conservation landscape as one of two predominant eco regions in which we work. The Helm Hills Conservation Area, which consists of Helm Hills Nature Preserve, Wizard Ranch Nature Preserve, and now the additional acquisition of 1,061 acres, has a master plan vetted by all conservancy programs our municipal, state, and federal partners, our integrated land management plan partners, including user groups and volunteers, neighbors of the preserve, and residents of the township in which the preserves reside. We are collaborative and transparent 
in our land management process. With similar attention, we are implementing three large trail projects within the River Hills Conservation Area by implementing the Tuckwin Glen and Pfeiffer Trail System redesign with improved trails for less stream crossings, less trails along stream banks, more reroutes out of the stream's floodplain, and a concise trail system with simple wayfinding and improved tread for visitor and first responder safety. The second project being the Lloyd Clark Trail, which is a one mile long universal access trail that provides improved access to folks with limited mobilities and highlights a dynamic meadow and commanding views of the Susquehanna River Gorge. The universal accessibility of the trail will also allow for hunting opportunities for folks with more limited mobilities, as well as for the first time ever, direct emergency access to the wind caves. These two large projects are connected by the Conestoga Trail and therefore improving access from Clark Nature Preserve to Tuckwin Glen and Piper Nature Preserve will be the third project that connects the first two. And lastly, we have completed the transition of ownership of Pinnacle Overlook from our portfolio of nature preserves to Pennsylvania State Parks. The Conservancy is the largest public land owner and manager within the River Hills of Southern Lancaster County, but we are a land trust, not a park system. However, our success of building out the preserves of the River Hills Conservation Area for passive recreation necessitates the amenities of a state park to reduce the overall impact of visitation on our nature preserves. Between Pinnacle becoming a state park and our improvements at Clark Nature Preserve with Tuckwin Glen keystoned in between and served by improved access along the Conestoga Trail, we are planning and implementing yet again on a large scale that, has, that is much more holistic in strategy. In these ways, we are leading in landscape scale conservation planning and implementation with a balance between habitat and ecosystem health and function and public access and passive recreation, such as hiking, hunting, and fishing. Now to talk more about the ways in which the Conservancy engages the community, I'm pleased to introduce our Senior Vice President of Community Impact, Mr. Fritz Schroeder. Thanks, Brandon. And good evening, everyone. Thank you again for joining us. I have the great pleasure of managing a team of committed environmental professionals as part of our community impact department that handles our organization's marketing and communications, fundraising and development, as well as all of our engagement and educational programming. Tonight, I wanna to focus on how our organization strategically implements our community-based educational programming through interpretive events, volunteer engagement, and the build out of Climbers Run Nature Center. We are actively running interpretive programs for youth and adults, inviting community organizations, school and scout groups, as well as corporate partners to our nature preserves where they get to use all of their senses to explore the natural world. Interpretive programs allow our professional staff to guide groups through meadows and forests, streams and wetlands, encouraging participants to develop their observation skills. What do they see and hear? Easy access to streams at locations like Climbers Run Nature Center allows students to turn over rocks and use nets to capture and study river life we rarely see from the surface, to observe birds in multiple habitats within easy walking distance, and to explore mature wooded acreage teeming with life just below the leafy surface of the forest floor. The organizations and businesses listed here have made commitments to their students and employees they are engaged in conservation education because they see and understand the need to educate current and future leaders about Lancaster's precious, precious natural resources. Volunteers are a considerable part of our current success and a necessary part of our future. With 8,000 acres and counting, we cannot succeed in maintaining our beautiful nature preserves or engaging and guiding our visitors without a strong group of committed and well-trained volunteers. Thanks to the leadership of our engagement coordinator, Keith Williams, we continue to expand our self-guided basic trainings that target people who want to work on and engage visitors at our nature preserves. And just this past winter, we held our first advanced training with over 20 Conservancy staff, Conservancy volunteers, and community partners participating in wilderness first aid training. 
Whether you have two or 10 hours per month, there are opportunities for all levels of volunteers and we hope you will consider joining us. Climbers Run Nature Center is the hub of our engagement and educational programming. The unique character of the landscape of this nature preserve with upland forest, meadows, wetlands, pond, and high quality cold water stream make this an ideal location for engaging the public not to mention the barn for indoor classrooms, kitchen and bathrooms. We are undertaking a number of infrastructure improvements in the coming years to ensure safe access for all, outdoor classrooms, interpretive gardens and new trails. We're looking to build out this site so we can better serve the community of volunteer students and community partners that support conservation in Lancaster County. The success of our organization is experiencing is because of an incredibly dedicated staff who takes our cue and inspiration from a dedicated board, committees, engagement and preserve volunteers and members like all of you on this call tonight. Thank you from our community impact team and staff for making our efforts worthwhile, for having our backs, for hiking our trails, for loving our precious landscapes and for attending our events like this evening. And we have several Upcoming events, we would like to note for you to mark on your calendars. Join us for Protect and Restore, a spring celebration for nature. Gather with fellow supporters as we celebrate spring and special announcement about efforts to protect and restore our community's natural lands. That's coming up on May 24th. This June, Water Week will return for its sixth year. Join us for over 20 events as we paddle, stop, explore, volunteer, and take action as a community to protect our streams and rivers for the future. And in its 12th year, Dine on Harvest Moon. It's the hardest ticket to come by, and we are excited to announce we'll be at the Convention Center in downtown Lancaster, allowing us more space for more attendees like all of you. This is an evening filled with laughter, entertainment, and serious giving. If you want to see all of your favorite Conservancy staff dressed for the occasion, then you must join us this year. And now it's my pleasure to hand it over to our forester, Eric Roper, for the community awards portion of the evening. Thank you, Fritz. Good evening. It is my honor to speak to you tonight in recognition of all that Dave Meyer has done for the Lancaster Conservancy over the last 15 years. Dave joined the Conservancy after his retirement from Millersville University as a part-time land steward in 2007. That makes him the longest tenured employee of the Conservancy. But really, part-time may be a misnomer. When not working on the clock, Dave can be found volunteering at any number of our preserves or crafting gorgeous woodwork pieces for auction at Dine on Harvest Moon and as gifts for donors. And in doing so, he really stretches the definition of part-time. Some of you may have been fortunate enough over the years to meet Dave out working on one of our preserves. For those of you who have not had such an opportunity, you have likely appreciated the fruits of his labor. His fingerprints are all over our preserves, particularly Climbers Run and the Reed Run Meadow at Clark Nature Preserve. Anyone who has taken an early morning walk through the meadow at the northern end of Reed Run and listened as a wide array of songbirds call out, have Dave to thank. Even more incredible, his hard work and dedication to the establishment and maintenance of this meadow has inspired private landowners to walk into the NRCS office and ask how they too can create a meadow like the one they saw at Reed Run at Clark Nature Preserve. This has been relayed to me more than once by our conservation partners. I do not have time to speak to all the incredible projects and work Dave has put in over his 15 years of service or his impact or the impact his leadership and knowledge of the land has had on every member of the stewardship team. So in lieu of that, I ask you to join me in saluting Dave as we present him this Lifetime Achievement Award. And now I would like to introduce Steve Moore Jr., the Senior Preserves Manager to present our Municipal Partners Award. The Conservancy is blessed with amazing support from local communities. Along with individual community members like Dave, we get incredible support from our partners in local and county government. That support can mean Drew Moore Township, helping with hazardous trees on our Fishing Creek Nature Preserve, 
Kanoi Township bringing large equipment to move soil for a planting project at our wetlands preserve, or the team at Mardik Township helping to resolve parking issues at some of our popular preserves in the River Hills area. At our Welsh Mountain Nature Preserve, we have an amazing partner in East Earl Township. That municipality has recognized Welsh Mountain as an incredible asset and natural resource for their local community. The East Earl Roads crew has worked side by side with Conservancy staff and volunteers for several years on a number of projects to both improve access and to improve stormwater infiltration on our Welsh Mountain Preserve. This evening, we are proud to recognize the exceptional contributions of East Earl Township's Roads Master, Scott Marburger, with our Municipal Partner Award. Scott has been an absolute joy to work with, eager to, eager to connect our stewardship efforts to local resources, like arranging for hundreds of cubic yards of wood chips to be delivered each year for trail improvement projects. Scott leads a committed team at East Earl, which also brings heavy equipment to Welsh Mountain each fall for those trail projects. Scott enjoys spending personal time on our preserve as well, and is also the first to contact our stewardship staff with maintenance needs on the property or just great ideas for improvements or new projects that we can undertake in the future. The Conservancy is extremely grateful for Scott's support, and we always hope to find more incredible supporters like him pillars of our local communities who value the Conservancy's land protection efforts. Scott, from everyone at the Conservancy, thank you for all that you do. Amen, amen. Thank you, Eric and Steve, and especially thank you to Dave Myers and Scott Marburger. We are just so delighted to have this recognition tonight of your service. In closing, I just have a few things on my mind here. You've heard about our largest acquisition, $11 million and over a thousand acres in a single bite over in Helm Township. And it's a huge growth opportunity for the Conservancy. And once we acquire it, we will be breaking the 9,000 acre mark, making us the largest property owner in Lancaster County and Susquehanna Riverlands. That's truly amazing. But at the same time, it's a very heavy lift for the organization. Owning and managing public lands is a blessing. It's so exciting to protect this land, but it's a curse as well. I describe it as a backpack. And for those of you who have gone camping or carried a backpack, it grows heavier and heavier the larger it is and the more you put in it. But what I love about this organization is that we're growing in the number of people who are willing to carry that weight and carry that backpack with growing numbers of staff, volunteers, contributors, and supporters. We do have a remarkable board. We do have an energized team. We are growing. And that's because we know we can't sit still. This is our time. So whether we're committing to major restoration projects, like ramping up stewardship because of all this land that we have to take care of, or we're going out and taking big bites of the apple and doing large landscape scale protection projects, we are not going to sit still. We are going to accelerate and energize this mission. I just wanna say thank you so much for being here and going along for the ride. Your investments in membership, the contributions that you've made in time and resources have a huge impact. And we would be nothing without our members and without the community supporting our work. You can see and feel the impact. That's what I love about working in this organization. And you know that this impact is going to help thousands of creatures who we share this planet with and the animals. And we know that we are giving them a chance to thrive in this landscape. So on behalf of the organization, I just wanna say thank you. It's very simple. Thank you for your passion for nature. Thank you for being a part of this organization and thank you for trusting us with your resources. We will continue to serve you to the highest level of our ability. Thank you. Have a great evening, everyone.